Welcome back to the channel. This video is about um, installing the components you need to run OpenXR for Pimax in IL-2 and in Flight Sim 2020 and also in DCS uh, and many other games that support OpenXR. Um, I did a video called uh, a walkthrough of how to get to 90 frames per second on uh, in the IL2 in IL2 on the Pimax Crystal, and that uses OpenXR. So I had a, a viewer ask if I could show how to install the programs that are needed. There are basically three programs that you need in addition to Open uh, to uh, IL2 to run it in VR on OpenXR. You can run it through Steam, or if you want to run it in OpenXR, you can kind of take Steam out of the picture by using uh, three little programs. And the first program is uh, that I would run is called Open Composite. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put the uh, a screen up showing you the address, uh, the internet address for GitHub to get all this stuff from. But I I want to show you on the screen right now as well. And you'll notice that when you get to the site, it gives you all the instructions you need. To download and install it and I think the team Questcraft I'm not sure who's on that team Matt B does, does knows them I think but they did a, a lovely job getting open composite together and what it does basically is tell steam to bugger off <laughs> you know it, it sets you up and forces uh, forces the game to use open XR then the next thing you need is the open xr toolkit now that was written by oh boy matt buccianeri i i hope i got your name right matt god he's done great work for the community but again here you have open xr tool cub toolkit you can download it from here and if you're if you can see my little mouse cursor flashing there's actually a website that matt has up that'll give you instructions on how to use it so you download it and you get all the instructions you need right there. And then we have, no, that's not what I need. That was me searching for these things. <laughs> open composite. Here, here we are, the Pimax Open XR Runtime. Now you're gonna need this too. So download it. And again, I've got, I've got the, uh, the URL for you and I'll, I'll show it on screen and I'll put it in the description box below this video. So these are basically the three programs you need other than the Pimax client and IL2. So let me close these. I do everything more slowly than I used to. And this is the file that I've got set up. I'll put it in the um, I'll put it in the description file. Now as long as we're doing this um, <clears throat> I might as well show you how we start uh, Pi to a uh, Pimax client. And I hope I have enough power left on this battery because I've used it for about four hours yesterday and I haven't changed it yet. I might have to swap the batteries out. Oh, I think it's going to be okay. All right. If you heard the beep, beep, a beep, that was Windows recognizing that the headset was turned on. Now let's see if we can get, uh, if we can get open uh, or uh, the Pimax client to recognize it. So here, over here, I've got my Pimax client icon, and I'll open that. And yes, I do want to let this app make changes. I'll fold that down for now. It'll take a second to come up. And this has been pretty bulletproof for me, but this, you know, now that I'm demonstrating it, this may, may be the one time it doesn't work. <laughs> No, I think it's going to work. I've got sign uh, diagnose 10,600 right there. So good. You plug it in, you turn it on, you go. I mean, it's it's a lot easier to use than the 8KX because by now, Pimax, of course, has a lot more experience in setting up user interfaces. And uh, this works really, really well. So we've got that set up. Now we need to open up the three programs that I showed you. I store the executables. Um, oh, that's the wrong thing. That's my car stuff. 
uh, sim stuff. That's what I want. Let's open open Composite first. This is the program that basically kicks out Steam and lets you run Open XR. And you'll see that once you've got it installed, you uh, you put it in this folder. You open up the folder. You click on Open Composite Executable. And all the details on how to do this are at the web page as an instruction set. Now you can see it's opened up a little window here that allows me to switch between Steam VR and Open Composite. If we hit the configure button, we'll see what games it's already set up for. It's a it's set up for DCS. It's set up for IL2, although it doesn't show here. Um, I haven't used the virtual desktop. It's interesting that it would set it up for that. And NextSaver is a program I use all the time that I also recommend. I've got a video on my channel about that. It allows allows you to look around a little more easily in flight sims like IL2 and, and DCS. Okay, so we've got that one up and running, and that's all we have to do. Start it running. There's, there's no settings you need to adjust. You just start it running. Next, we'll open up the OpenXR runtime. Make sure that's set for Pimax. And again... That's pretty much all you need to do, although you can adjust your joystick dead zone here if you like, right? And then we'll open up. Excuse me, this is getting old, you know, it ain't for sissies. The Open XR Toolkit. And this is the one that, that uh, I think Matt wrote, and it's really pretty cool. And actually oh, took me right to the start page of it which I don't need it's running and if you once you've got it open I mean it'll take you but if you have questions you can just go back to the start page now if you run into trouble and you want to run in Steam and you can't seem to get out of OpenXR you can disable the OpenXR toolkit here so that it doesn't try to run while you're using a Steam program although I've never found that to be a problem but if you do have issues with it it's nice that you can disable it you can also set it up to take a screenshot so you can so show people what uh, what the screen looks like in your VR headset. Because once I'm in VR, it won't show up on the flat screen. It only shows up on the left eye of my, uh, of my VR headset. Okay. Now, I'm also going to run that program that I talked about. Uh, NeckSaver. I really love this program. I think it's brilliant. The only change I would make, it allows you just by moving the hat left or right to move your head 20 or 30 degrees or 60 degrees if you want further than you can turn it on your own, which is good because I got an old stiff neck. And I, can't, I, can't, I can't check six very well behind me. So I just downloaded this and I fire it up. And it's important to fire it up before you start the game. And you can set up which key you want to use. And again, there's all kinds of explanations available for that. I just map it to my hat. There's only thing, one thing I'd like. I'd like to be able to pull the hat back and increase my angle of looking up. I used to fly sailplanes, and in a sailplane, it was really important to be able to look as nearly straight up as possible because often you were sharing a thermal with, this, with several other airplanes, several other gliders. So you, you really want to be able to keep an eye out for them. All right, that takes care of that. So we're all set up. We've got our three programs running. Plus, <clears throat> excuse me, plus the uh, neck saver. Now we'll go to device settings. And I'm set on 90 hertz, which is my comfort zone for my crystal and my machine, which is an i9-9900, 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, uh, an NVIDIA 3090 CPU. So we go to games, and we select, let's say, IL2. I really like IL2 really like it a lot like DCS too went for a World War one historian and uh, enthusiast not that I'm an enthusiast for war but I'm an enthusiast for the heroes of World War two uh, my 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 generation's parents were participants in World War two and that uh, that was the greatest generation I think anyway we can start it from here. If you want to, you can start it from Steam, but this that sort of defeats the purpose because we've just avoided Steam altogether by doing this. You can also click on My Assets and start it from here. 
but I tend to start everything from the Pimax Crystal because this is where I do all my settings. So back to device settings. And we're not worrying about frame rate or anything like that today. Pardon my yawning, but <clears throat> the older you get, the harder it is to sleep and the, at the nighttime and the, and the more you need to nap in the daytime. Sometimes I feel like a grumpy old bear sitting down to hibernate. All right, click on start to start IL-2. And if I've done everything work right, this should work. Now, it's loading Steam, but it won't run Steam VR. Steam VR works in Open VR. I had heard a rumor they were going to go to Open XR, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. In the meantime, uh, with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to run. Um, there it is. Steam is coming up. And if we have to, we can always start. We can always uh, we can always start from Steam if you want. It still won't run it in OpenVR. But as you can see, as the screen goes through several changes here, we are now showing uh, IL-2 Sturmovic loading normally. And as soon as it pops up in OpenXR or in uh, <laughs> in VR mode, with as soon as it's loaded up, I think we'll just stop. I'm not going to bother flying. I just wanted to show you. How to set it up. Let's just make sure it runs properly. It always uh, takes a few minutes for it to load. Those of you who play IL-2 know that sometimes it can be a little bit tedious waiting for it to load, but the end result is worth it. It was my winner in the longest loading game competition for a long time until I got Flight Sim 2020. Flight Sim 2020 takes so long I can grow a beard and shave it before it loads. Of course, that's that's a slight exaggeration. Because Flight Sim 2020 is worth waiting for. These new games on the Crystal, even the old ones on the Crystal, are amazing. It's... <laughs> well, I, you, the colors are so good. The resolution is so high. It's just... It's... Uh, a very very good VR experience the only thing I would wish for is a slightly wider field of view my 8kx spoiled me for that I would love it if the crystal had 160 degrees of view but it doesn't uh, however there are lenses coming test lenses that I hope we'll get before the beta test ends that might get us to 130 degrees 120 degrees I'm just guessing but Right now, my field of view horizontally and vertically is somewhere between 103 and 110. Some people are finding it higher, some people lower, but you know, about 103 degrees both ways for for most of the beta testers. So we're in the game. It's showing 89, 90 frames per second in the hangar, and I showed you how to do that in the previous video, so I don't need to discuss it here. So what have we learned? We've learned that there's three programs that you need to run if you want to run IL-2 and OpenXR through Steam, or even if it's a standalone version of IL-2. You need Open Composite. You need the OpenXR Toolkit, although I don't know if you absolutely have to have it, but I'll tell you what, you're going to want it, because once you figure it out, and the learning curve takes about half an hour. I mean, once you figure out where the keys are, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, once you learn how to use OpenXR, you can you can make a lot of changes in your VR experience right from there while in play. And then you also need the OpenXR runtime for Pimax. So that's all I have to tell you. That's beginning to end. Download the programs, run them, run IL-2, run the Pimax client, and it's all taken care of for you. It sounds complicated, but it really isn't, as I, as I hope you've seen. And thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I really appreciate it. If you could click on the like button, that would be great. If you want to leave a comment, also very nice. I'd appreciate it, and uh, I'm, I'm just glad to have you along for the ride. Take care now.